So in this last hour, I've actually been creating a new cell. This is now 316L stainless piping for my Voltrolysis project. Now in the past, I have always used the impedance matching circuits and that is nothing that I am setting aside. I absolutely love these circuits because they will always tune to the best resonant frequency depending on the impedance of the water and anything so forth. Lastly, can I just give a huge appreciation for the oscilloscope when doing voltrolysis because it is very difficult to determine when you are in resonance. And if I did not have a scope for any of this by any means, it would not be here and I would have almost no way of knowing if it works. But back on point, I've got some microwave transformers here. Yes, these are that you find in your overrange microwave ovens. And they were completely free because nobody wants broken microwaves apparently. So I'm actually going to, in a couple of days, incorporate the high voltage transformers with my impedance matching circuit so I can induce high voltage with a spark gap. Now I have a load of packages that I still haven't even opened yet. But that aside, let's go ahead and see what we can do today with our new Voltrolysis cell using a 3 16L stainless steel and we'll throw it onto the impedance matching circuit and see what we can come up with. Everybody, the new cell has been configured. I have the wires quite strategically set up here. If I go ahead and turn that around, you can see the blue wire. I didn't even weld it on there. I sort of just kinked it up with yellow wire and that goes right into the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but I actually have a hole on the center positive tube. That's right, everybody. The tube in the center is the positive tube and the outside is the ground which I actually in fact took a file earlier and scraped a bit more surface area in that larger tube because the more surface area you have on the ground and the more hydrogen you will get of course the impedance of the water has to be very pristine for that we are using as you can see there distilled water no other water i'm not going to use tap water like i have for this cell because i want this to be completely high resistance high impedance water. So here we go, distilled water into the cell. Look at that guys. It's getting there. I'm just being really careful not to miss. And I think I'm gonna stop right about there. That looks pretty good. And you can see some neat mist falling off of that from the bubbles. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this circuit probed up just like I have this one. I'll also reposition it so it's easier to see. Guys, I think we are ready to do a first experiment with distilled water on the impedance matching circuit. And I believe we're ready to turn this on for the very, very first time. I don't even know if this is going to work. This will be quite a fail, but here we go. All right, looks like we are in business should see hydrogen pretty soon. When you first turn on the cell, nothing happens initially, but I am very happy about the initial voltage. That is about 50 volts, and I have 24 volts in. As you can see, we are getting the very first bit of hydrogen off of this 316 stainless steel tube. And it's interesting, because it only comes off one side, but that's actually not super surprising if you think about the way that it's slanted. Yeah, so it's not that much to begin with, but the longer you let this run, I'm sure as well as you guys know, the more you will get. Okay, so we are back five minutes later, and I don't know if you guys can see there, but the voltage has nearly tripled in just five minutes. The frequency has gone way up by itself. I don't know if you can see that there. For 10x and five volt zoomed in, zoomed out, I mean. We have got 150 volt spikes, and it is climbing, it is pretty much past the 150 volt barrier in just a couple seconds of me talking here. So to see some of the production, I would say just by looking at it, it is better than it was to begin with. So you can see here, after just talking again for at least a couple minutes to a minute, it's already climbed to almost 170 volts. All right, now let's go ahead and see the power draw. So the supplies take around 12 watts at idle. So I'll go ahead and I'll power it back on. You can see everything just figures out where it was before. 
don't know if you can also hear it ringing. It has a very distinct sound. And you can see we are climbing back up to 26.6 watts. So 12 minus, so 27 minus 12 means we are taking roughly 15 watts of power. And the voltage spikes are nearly at 200 volts now. And yes, guys, this is where it's at. I have a whole bunch of these that actually still need dremeled when I was cutting them earlier. They're all 316L based off where I got the tube. It was from Zorro Select off eBay. And this was an older cell right here that I used in previous videos. And there's really nothing special about it. It is hooked up in series. And please don't quote me on this expert job here on wiring. This is absolutely terrible. The caulking job is completely unnecessary and you just have no reason to replicate it. It's flat out horrible. But you can see after running it for a week, there is a white coating of the oxide layer that forms. And I do get a ton of hydrogen based off of the longer I run it for. And no, in case you guys are wondering, the longer you run the cell, it will not take more power. It's as simple as the current diminishing and the voltage increasing. So you always equate to the same amount of wattage. All right, it is now morning and it looks like the production has increased. Now, I reconfigured the blue wire, the ground. I actually put it so it was higher instead of all the way down there where the center positive is, just so that the minuscule current in the cell would have a bit more of a distance to travel. And it looks like we've got a little bit more of a fall off now. And after making this adjustment, I was at about 50 volts and it has gone up to 75 volts overnight. And the frequency went from 3000 Hertz to 4000 hertz and you can actually hear it ring a lot better now All right, so I just got the snow from outside. It recently has just started mowing down with snow. And I'm gonna use my dual high voltage uh, cell fresnating system here. And I am going to use my dual high voltage transformer setup. And this is a cell fresnating circuit. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. It's just a number of different components and you've got the spark gaps. I actually have two of them um, hooked up in Honestly, it's more of like a parallel configuration, and I can get double the voltage out of both of these secondaries, including their primaries on down there where it's configured. Because And right there, you can see where all of the diodes are configured, and they come out of the primaries as well as the secondaries, and they come out of that one yellow wire, and you can see it looping around there. I've got it right here. Now when I plug it in, you'll notice a couple things. First off, there's a ringing sound. And secondly, this lead right here is the high voltage end. So if I short that across the ground of the casing on the transformer, just get enormous radiant spark. And at idle, that takes around 25 watts uh, because the resonance and the spark gaps have to go. Well, it looks like the snow is melting pretty good. I can't wait to see how this is gonna do. Meanwhile, I'll just have fun with the high voltage here. The snow is still trying its best to melt, and it has gotten up to about there as far as the pure water forming just off of the snow itself. So it'll be exciting to see exactly what it does with this new circuit I built. Honestly, I'm not too sure. So it could be a complete disaster and only a couple bubbles, or it could be, or it could be a lot. We'll just have to find out. Okay, so after about 50 minutes, finally, I would say that the water level is good, and this is just purely melted snow, exact same, the same chamber. So let's go ahead and plug it in, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, there's some of the spikes. So we'll just have to see. It's really cold in the water. Oh, you can kind of see the gas there. It's very hard to tell because my camera is getting blurry. But there we go. That is hydrogen. But there we go. That is hydrogen from snow. Let's see if I can adjust the frequency a bit. And I usually do that with this tuning inductor. You'll see as I slide it in and out, the frequency can go up or down on the LC resonance circuit. And yeah, that's uh, quite interesting. 
It's really hard to see. Still trying to focus it. Most of that's actually just the fogginess of the of the cup itself. It's not really relevant to the quality of my focus. There you go, you can kind of see it now a little bit better. So there you have it, hydrogen from snow, just like Stanley Meyer said in one of his commercials, which I find pretty nice. The colder the liquid, the less impedance it has. So the voltage is not incredible, and I don't imagine it to be. Yeah, we're getting probably at least a thousand volts going in, and there is a just a very simple 12 volt input. I don't even have it hooked up in series anymore with 24 volts. That's just 12 volt input. I'll tell you what, generating hydrogen in an ice bath of water is actually possible. I'm still doing my best to get the voltage at the right spot because remembering that the frequency has to correspond to the dielectric value of the water. And the only way to do that really is just to kind of tinker around with a thousand hertz and you'll really get the right adjustment. And this cell here has absolutely not been conditioned at all. It's pretty much just a completely new 316 cell.